everybody, welcome back to the Grognard's Corner, and actually we're not really in the Grognard's Corner. Uh, today we're, we're trying a little bit something different. We're over at, actually at the Grognard's Computer, and we are taking a look at a computer game. And I know everybody thinks, oh, Devin, you're a crusty old Grognard. All you do is play hex encounter games and push those silly little counters around. No, no, I actually really do uh, enjoy a good computer war game simulation, um, and there are plenty of them out there. And so I figured I, I was going to start highlighting some of the ones I played, some of the ones I enjoyed, and what I like. And I don't know if this is going to be a regular thing, uh, but it is definitely something we are, we are looking at. And, and I would really appreciate everybody's feedback. If you want to see me do more on computer games, or if you think I should just stick to the, uh, the, the Hex Encounter stuff. But uh, we are taking a look at Total Rome 2 Total War. Um, now, I will say I have been a huge Total War fan since I first got into the series when uh, Medieval came out. I, I kind of missed out on Shogun, uh, the very first one. I, uh, I was involved, or well, I wasn't involved, I, I managed to get in a, uh, uh, a demo, or managed to download a demo copy of it and play it. It really wasn't all that impressed with it, because back then it's, you know, it was, was flat 2D graphics you know for the units there was no 3d graphics and so when rome total war came out i didn't get into it too much um and then uh when medieval came out that's kind of really when i got it and i i absolutely love the total war series the simple fact that uh that that you can kind of alter history and if, if you've been a fan of my podcast and listens you know that i, I love alternative histories um and kind of i started off as egypt now i will say i am not i'm not a, a clever player when it comes to this game, I'm about 200 turns in, and as you can kind of see, Egypt has kind of exploded all over the place. And I'm sure there are people out there who, who could probably do much better in a lot shorter time than I am. There's a few mechanics of the game I don't understand, the politics, that type of stuff. But it, it's a game that I have fun with. And honestly, when we're gaming, that's what we're supposed to be, right? We're supposed to be having fun. So I've got about 150 hours in uh, in Total War or in uh, Rome 2. Uh, the first time I played it through, I did the Rome campaign and uh, probably put about 100 hours into it before I finally beat it and pretty much won as Rome. Took me a while, but I eventually did it. But I always wanted to play as Egypt, and I've probably got about oh I don't know, I think I had 20 hours. I tried playing Carthage. Um, but <laughs> I tried playing Carthage about four or five times and failed each time. And I've, I've tried playing Egypt several times as well. Um, I think this is my fifth start at Egypt before I finally figured out what I had to do. Um, basically, when you start off as Egypt, you only got kind of like this territory right here, a little bit into Li Libya, Egyptus, and uh, uh, Jerusalem over here, but your biggest enemy at the start is the Seleucids, and they would just keep coming in and kicking my ass, and I didn't know what I was doing. Finally figured out, all right, just screw it, let's build a couple build big armies and just, just weather the storm, and uh, managed and was smart enough to send some of my ships up, because uh, I have a, a Syri uh, Cyprus right here, it was a, is a uh, satrapy, uh, it's a, pro it's a uh, client state of mine, and I sent ships up there to help them hold off the Seleucids, and that worked and then the Seleucid armies kind of crashed over my two armies and I managed to start pushing back and yeah it kind of exploded all over the place about 200 turns later the one thing I love about uh, historical war about about the Total War series and this is also crops up a lot in uh, like Crusader Kings 2 and uh, uh, Uniper, uh, Uni Europa Universalis 3 and 4 it's just the oddness that shows up because right now so here we have Egypt and we have you know Saudi Arabia here modern day Saudi Arabia and here's Turkey you see these little nations right here with the kind of circle stripe marker? Yeah, that's Galatia. As in the Celtic, Iberian, Irish, Galatia. What the hell they're doing over here in Turkey? I have no idea, but somehow they got all the way from up here, over here in Caledonia, Erebonia down to Turkey, and they own most of Turkey there for the longest time, and I've been going, I've been having several wars with them the last couple, three decades, um, but, so it's just kind of an odd thing, in fact, I'm actually at war with them right now, and I'm kind of closing in, uh, the red nations are all the nations that I'm at war with, 
Yeah, people don't like expansionism for some reason. Um, <laughs> Blue is my ally of Rome. Rome has not fared real well. The barbarians of the north have pretty much come through and gutted most of Rome. There isn't much of Rome left. Um, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I've kind of been avoiding that side of the of the game. I've kind of been mainly focusing over here. Uh, it, the thing I love about the Total War series, let's go back and start doing my turn. The thing I love about the Total War series is you've got the these beautiful strategic maps of all the areas and all your army groups and everything like that. So let's bring up the strategic map again. Where are we? Where are we got some fighting going on? All right, we're up here dealing with the uh, uh, Bukharas. And historically, I don't even know who they are, but yeah, I'm at war with them. So. I'll go ahead and grab my army group and up oh, I got I got my elephants my African war elephants I kind of like those got my obligatory uh, uh, slingers uh, I always usually have about four units of, 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 of bowmen type things I was reading and I don't know if this is true and I'm sure there are smarter people out there than I that people say that slings are actually better than bows so I've been kind of going with slings and it seems to kind of work out pretty well and I have some pikemen that I usually have screen than my swordsmen but so you have this grand strategic map and then when you get into oh he's out of movement oh that's right i already finished off my turn for all this stuff <laughs> um oop, got a skill i gotta i gotta you uh whenever your people level up you gotta give them new skills and i actually just found out playing recently that what actually dignitaries and spies and how to level and 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 my my champions how they actually like I said I've got like almost 200 hours and I just really figured out how to really work them really well how they're supposed to be used to their full potential in this playthrough of the game like I said I'm not a clever man <laughs> now the reason I'm showing you Rome 2 and not the most most modern one of Attila is because I picked up Attila on Steam uh, for like 12 bucks, went through, played it. That game is a hell of a lot harder than Rome 2 was. Um, basically, it goes on the concept that, well, it's, you know, the times of the Attila the Hun rampaging through. It, probably 200 turns into the game, I had been able to capture about, you know, and secure about 15 territories and there were you know huge doom stacks of huns just rampaging through all of europe laying waste to everything and honestly in that game it's kind of it's kind of nice because you can actually sack and permanently raise settlements in that one so and it costs you like ten thousand gold if you want to want to reestablish a, a, a raised settlement. Basically, you know, three quarter, probably a good half to three quarters of the provinces had just been raised by the Huns, and I did, it was just very very frustrating, very very frustrating game. I'm sure I'll revisit it in the future. I didn't like it that much, so I kind of came running back to Rome too. My favorite is probably uh, Empire, uh, the the Napoleonic era. Uh, grand world uh, that one I've had probably the most fun I like the rifle uh, action in it uh, the gunpowder action um, so yeah go ahead and end my turn I'm trying to get what my entire point of this oh look at this what have we got oh Rome I've got a kind of a defensive alliance with Rome hoping they were actually going to be bigger but as we can kind of see most of Rome has already fallen to the barbarian hordes they want me to join in a war against Massilia which is over here. You know what? I, I don't care if they're offering me 1400 Rome, I like you. You're the only person that likes me, but it's not happening. So let the computer run through all of its turns. Pontus, I've been... Uh, looks like I'm going to be going back to war with them here real soon. A couple of their army groups just moved near one of my cities. I mean, I already kicked them out of, uh, out of Turkey. Well, what's modern-day Turkey, anyways? But looks like they haven't learned their lesson. Yeah, I'm at war with Sparta. Yeah, battle deployment. Here's my odds right here. There is no odds for me. There is the yellow bar normally would indicate that I have a chance. Yeah, I can either fight it out on the battle map with these few units against all that. Basically, 686 uh, 
garrison army against a full army of 2100 not going to happen we're just going to auto resolve it and honestly i really don't care about losing that city i went up there just to kind of piss sparta off I, I i sacked it and stole as much gold from it as possible and just left it it's like all right you go you go have fun with that oh look at that i lost big surprise spartans deployed 2100 lost 47 i had 686 i lost 686 <laughs> Anyways, not that big of a loss. Like I said, it was just me kind of poking Sparta. It's like, you want to declare war on me again? Fine, I'll come up, kick you in the teeth a little bit. Steal a bunch of gold from you and run away. Cyprus, my uh, my puppet state, they've kind of irritated me a little bit. They've, 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 they've ran in and snuck in and stolen a couple provinces that <laughs> I was trying to, uh, trying to capture. Uh-oh, slums. What? Oh, wow, I do have slums. Uh, Got to manage your, manage your cities. All the cities have little slots. They're going to have different things that go into them, and different. they do different things that like give you food or make your people happy or religion or trade or all that good stuff. But get back to what I was wanting to get to. Showing off, and I'm sure most people have already seen this, and I'm just kind of... But you go on the attack... To, eh, we're not going to do that one. Go to the big strategic map. You have the option of fighting it. But again, no, no, here, battle deployment. Now my strength of forces is completely yellow. You know, I'm going to win the fight anyways. Do I want to actually spend my time doing it? now? we'll just go ahead and auto-resolve. And... Oh, brutal fatality. Finish him! And yay, I take the city. I have the option of looting, raising, or occupying. I don't like That's looting or raising the the villa the cities that are going to be part of my empire. Whoops, we don't want that. Because uh well, they're gonna be part of my empire and I don't want to repair their crap. So upgrade a bunch of stuff. Oops, we don't want that either. We want that one. Upgrade that. Nah, upgrade that. All right. Continue looking at what else we got. Um, got on. Is it another army group? That is another army group. Or is that a hero? Nope. That's just an enemy hero. Oh nope. That's a. Uh, it's a, a Cyprus. Uh, or a, one of my allies' heroes. Trying to play the game and concentrate on what I'm trying to say at the same time. <laughs> Probably not the best deal. Let's try to find. I don't know if I've got a good army on army. I think I've kicked in the teeth of all the. All the all the enemies' armies, but anyways. So yes, this is this is this is another game that I like to play. Another game I like to do. I like the Total War series. Ah, actually, I love the Total War series. Um, looking forward to uh, uh, Warhammer, a game that's coming out in uh, March. I think it is next month. Um, but yeah. This is this is what else the original Grogdar does when he's when he's not pushing counters around a map. He actually jumps on the computer and plays computer games. Oh, another one. I'm not even gonna bother fighting it. It's gonna beat him anyway. Actually, you know what? These are <laughs> these are the Celts. We'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and attack these guys. So you got the grand strategic map, like I've been saying, and then when you go to the battle, you go down to the actual nitty-gritty, on the field command, where it's broken down by your individual units. And we'll see it. Fortunately, I got a fast enough computer; it doesn't take several minutes for it to load up the battles like it used to. It was one of the things that it was always painful for me when I was playing <laughs> on my older computers. Oh, rain! We don't like rain. We'll wait. Hey, dry. Okay, we like dry. We're gonna start it in dry. So, we've got uh, our our formations that we can go ahead and set up right now, and this is basically where we're attacking. As the attacker, we set up first. We have no idea where the defenders are gonna be, and I either win by killing a majority of the troops to rout them, or by capturing Stonehenge, a Stonehenge-like object in Turkey. Like I said. Why the Celts are over here in Turkey, I have no idea. This is kind of the standard formation I like to run. Um, and Attila, it was known as the uh, Double Pesipus. Um, but basically, archers in the front, set in skirmish mode, 
pikemen behind that. Oh, we move him out of there. And then swordsmen behind that. And then cavalry flanking off to the screens, or off to the sides. Let me get my general. And the general right in the back in the middle of everything. <clears throat> so if we can get real down here, real close, and kind of see... Those are my archers, slingers. There's a lot of detail that was given to the models. And each unit has its own graphical look to them and look and feel to them. So, and here's my... Yeah, I actually have some... Uh, Galatian. Uh, <laughs> Galatian swordsmen working for me. So they've definitely got that Celtic look and feel to them. And then my... Ptolemy Cavalry... It's my general's unit. And then Egyptian cavalry with definitely an Egyptian feel to them. So yeah, that's one thing I've always loved about this game, just the, the detail that they give to all of all of the units. Now, my, my knowledge of, of the ancients and the Middle Ages is very lacking, so I don't know how historically accurate they are, but you know, hey, it's a game, I'm having fun with it, and it looks generally generally uh, accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and go with that. Basically, I just move my entire formation up in line. The enemy's hidden right now. I have no idea where the bad guys are at. Cavalry, of course, moves faster, so they kind of move up. They they get they get on line and into position a little bit quicker. I kind of wish there was an option that the cavalry you could choose for the cavalry move at the same pace of infantry. Ah, there we go. There they are. It looks like we got some archers, some bowmen, we got some definitely Celtic-looking models there. Got back here, we got some spearmen and swordsmen moving in formation. Again, a definitely a Celtic look and feel to them. Uh, that poor infantry unit is just going to get butchered. I got slings, so they're not quite as long range as bows and arrows. But, you know, when I've got four units of 90, so I've got basically 300 slingers right there, and they're shooting at 90 enemy skirmishers, as you can see. Slings are coming in and the numbers are going down. Um, slings are nice because they, they have the highest amount of ammunition because, well, they're rocks. Doesn't take much talent, skill, or ability to pick up a rock. To use it in a sling effectively, yes, that takes skill, but at least you're not making arrows. So that's why they have the most ammo, which I kind of like for long, protracted engagements. Yeah, we've done so much damage to them. The, the, the flag is, is blinking. That means their morale is wavering. And I'm, I'm a real big fan of, of standoff shoot the enemy before they get to your tactics so that's why I kind of always like having my my uh, archers or my missile in the front I'll go ahead and move up a little bit saying so he's moving some moving down off of this hill and I've got these guys set in skirmish mode so that means as soon as uh, an enemy unit gets too close to them they automatically run back which is fine because if we have a big line of enemy infantry rushing at my uh, missile troops They'll be sitting there, they'll be pelting the enemy, and then they'll fall back, and then we have this line of pikemen and spearmen uh, in the second line to kind of absorb the blow, and then I have my swordsmen in the back as a, as a counterattack. So, and then, of course, cavalry on the flanks if the opponent has cavalry. Um, I, I love war elephants. Um, it takes, it, it, there are only certain buildings that let you build war elephants, but if you can get them, I usually try to get four units of war elephants instead of my cavalry. And I'll just unleash them into the enemy lines, you know, early in the game, especially big formation battle. And uh, the, cal the, the the elephants will, on their own, just route the entire enemy army. I, the elephants are just obscenely powerful. The problem with elephants is, see, there's my missilemen starting to fall back because these spearmen are getting too close. Um, the problem with the cavalry or the, the elephants is that they have a tendency to go berserk and will attack anything around them. So that's why I kind of send them in first and just leave the rest of my troops hanging back until most of the enemy's main line is shattered. Bunch of lines, units have been discovered. bunch of infantry crashing into me, bunch of spearmen, my pikemen 
Yeah, I was a very heavy pikeman. They should be able to hold. I usually have my cavalry on the flanks. Cavalry, of course, you don't want to charge into enemy spears because that just tends to be a really bad recipe for disaster. Unless you're attacking the, those spears from the flanks or from behind. Then the spears don't get to uh, use their full advantage. Yeah, these cavalry over here chase those bowmen down. I mean, just you have a, just a lot of people on the field in the fight at any one time. It is actually kind of impressive. Okay, granted, maybe not the same scale that you know the actual historical battles. Are. Basically, what I do is I equate that uh, you know each man represents ten men historically. So you know, for this two thousand man army, you know, I see it as 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 a as a 20,000 man force what it would be historically and see so I want to broke broke their broke their morale and they ran away so I'll go ahead and end the battle I don't want to say ooh, walled crown got an achievement steam has achievements I sometimes spend too much time chasing them um so yeah they de I deployed uh 1900 and 80 I lost 48 they deployed 780 lost now see this is something I always get a chuckle out of the enemy killed 46 but I lost 48 that means my missileman or somebody got a little bit too eager and I was killing my old man with it it happens you know it's less than 1% so I can I can I can deal with those type of losses but when you're firing me melee units or missile units into melee you got to expect to take some casualties so anyways yeah that's a uh, this has probably gone on much longer than I intended it to I've been I've been kind of rambling while I've been playing um I hope everybody enjoys taking a quick look at Rome 2 Total War I don't even know who does it I can't even remember off the top of my head who does oh that's so embarrassing oh and I try to say I'm a professional. Actually, I don't. Anyways, let me know what everybody thinks. Uh, if y'all want to see more things like this in the future, maybe with me going into more more detailed uh, on games mechanics and such, uh, I probably will. This is this is an easy easy thing for me to do rather than uh, than setting up the camera and getting a game on the table. So we may we may be seeing a mix of uh, of computer games and. Uh, uh, hex uh, tabletop hex and counter games so let me know what everybody thinks if you got ideas and suggestions for other games because i do kind of have a pretty vast library of, uh, of computer war games let me know and i will catch everybody later see ya